Uh, good morning, Senator. Good let morning. Me move, let me move a little closer. From um, mosquitoes to me. I don't know if it's going <laughs> up yeah, or down. Yeah. Is everyone itching? <laughs> um, I have the sniffles, and I'm not using cocaine, I promise you. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this, what, do you, what do you want to talk about? This might be about? better if he were. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this morning, headline in the New York Times that uh, the UN study concluded that the Russians did shoot down uh, Malaysian Flight 17. Right. We suspected. We didn't know. Um, is Russia the menace that many people think it is, or is it what Donald Trump thinks it is, or the head of your uh, party thinks it is, <laughs> someone, someone I, to be right. embraced. I'm in the menace camp. Uh, yeah. Just ask the people on the receiving end of Russia's kindness as to whether or not you think they're a menace. So there's really some big themes here. Putin, friend, or foe? Foe. Mm -hmm. Give Hillary a check mark for that one. Mm -hmm. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Keep track. Yeah. That's one. Aside. Must go, or you can work with him. I'm in the must go camp. Give her a check mark there. All right. Iran deal, good, bad. I'm in the bad camp. Give Donald a check mark. Uh, when it comes to rebuilding the military and setting aside sequestration, I think Donald's got that right. So these are sort of the big themes of the, of the campaign, I think, in terms of foreign policy. How do you see the world? If you don't understand Assad must go, then you really don't understand the war in Syria. I don't want to get mired in Syria, as we okay. could possibly do. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> but, but, you know, there are maybe five civil wars going on there, a couple of proxy wars, mm -hmm. Russians completely unreliable. Um, the country uh, doesn't want boots on the ground, and even a no-fly zone requires... Who says that? Every poll of Americans no, that's taken. I don't buy that. I don't buy that. I don't well, know tell what me, how, how, do, how do we get into Syria in an effective way? Great question. Where, um, you know, we, we come out with a solution. I hear this want. about Iraq. We have like 5,000 troops in Iraq. <clears throat> It'd be news to them that their boots are not on the ground. Mm -hmm. The bottom line is that most Americans <clears throat> want to keep the war over there so it doesn't come, come here. Do you get that? I think most Americans realize we need partners, and to be an effective partner, you have to actually show up. So here's the problem I have with Syria. Uh, the YPG Kurds are the main ground component that we're relying upon to liberate Raqqa and destroy ISIL. Do all you follow that? The YPG Kurds are pretty much outliers in terms of the Arab world. They cannot go and take ISIL down and hold Raqqa, Syria. I asked the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, Senator, uh, uh, Senator uh, General Dunford, does this ground force, mainly Kurds, could they liberate Raqqa, destroy ISIL, and hold the ground, hold the territory? And he said, no, you need Arabs to do that. We don't have that holding Arab force yet. Now, the Kurds could care less about Assad going. I think most Syrians really do care about the fact that the guy who's bombed their family and killed their family is going to stay in power. So our ground component to destroy ISIL, and you need some military pressure on Assad to get a diplomatic solution, doesn't exist. Other than that, we're doing well in Syria. Uh, let me move a little more <laughs> domestic. Well, no, let me ask you another question. Well, how about, about Syria. won't you ask me this? Would you put ground troops in to deal with ISIL in Syria? Would I? Let okay. self question yourself. Yeah, okay, yeah. I would. <laughs> <laughs> Lindsay, would you? Yes. We have four or five hundred. I give President the credit to put some training capability on the ground inside of Syria to expedite the ground component you need to destroy ISIL. You're not going to carpet bomb ISIL away. Somebody's got to go and dig them out and take back the territory and hold it, right? So I think you need more American ground training components and you need more Arabs to be successful. So we have about 5,000 American forces in Iraq I said 10,000. We actually have about 7,000 when you count people off the books. If you want to take Mosul and hold it, the more American troops within reason, somewhere between eight and 10,000, would allow you a capability to supplement the Iraqi security forces where they'd be less reliant upon Shia militia, who are a very potent ground force, but unwelcomed in Mosul. This is sort of complicated. At the end of the day, I don't know if Mr. Trump understands all this, 
the way I understand it is I've been there 38 times. I made tons of miscalculations like everybody else who talks about Syria and Iraq. And what have I learned? A lot of troops doing the wrong thing doesn't get you to where you want to go. Some troops doing the right thing actually works, and no troops can never work. So my guess is, if I may self-answer, is yes. that I don't think Mr. Trump does understand that. Well, you've got to look at it yeah. and absorb it and talk, you know, like bombing people. Would you, here's a good question for Trump and Clinton. If the Iraqis would agree, which they would have to begin with, but this time around, let's say we liberate Mosul, and they would agree to 10,000 troops to stay there to make sure it doesn't fall back apart again, would you as commander-in-chief agree to commit those troops uh, if the Iraqis ask. I would, and if you don't understand the need for the troops post-Mosul, post-Fallujah, mm -hmm. post-Ramadi, then you really don't understand the consequences mm -hmm. of us leaving. Right. Uh, let me move to immigration. You said that if Republicans did, didn't get on the right side of immigration, you might never win the White House again. We're am testing I, that proposition. Am I quoting you yes, correctly? Yes. I, I said yeah. we're in a demographic yeah. death spiral with Hispanics, the fastest mm -hmm. growing demographic in America, and you go from 44% to 27%. Bush got 44, Romney got 27, and I've had this novel idea, well, why don't you ask Hispanics why they don't like us as much as they used to? <laughs> and they'll actually tell you. Uh, we think you're pretty hateful when it comes to immigration. I'm not going to vote for somebody that will deport my grandmother. We have a lot of values in common, but you seem to have a harsh, unworkable solution on immigration that we find offensive. If you ask them, they will tell you. So our response to our problems in 2012 was go from self-deportation to forced deportation. We'll see if that's the right direction. Now, there's a lot of, pro <laughs> there's a lot of progress for you. Um, yeah, that's progress so, for somebody. So the candidate, the candidate who uh, wants to build a wall, it's a beautiful wall. With doors. With, do with, with doors. doors. Yeah, Big doors. Right. Mark, entrance, exit. I don't mind securing yeah. the border with yeah. fencing, with yeah. a wall where yeah. necessary. Here's the big thing. We've got two borders, one with Canada, mm -hmm. one with Mexico. Don't you think it's odd we have, like, no illegal Canadians? <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, yeah. They yeah. come yeah. to yeah. Myrtle Beach in March. Yeah. Right. They go swimming. <laughs> We're glad they come because it's too cold for us to swim. But they go back home. <laughs> <laughs> so why... Why? Well, they have a good place to go to. Most people here illegally come from bad places. And you can build a wall. We need to secure our border, double the border patrol, drones, walls, fencing. But if you don't address why people come, which is economic opportunity, you've got to control a job. You'll yeah. never fix this. Yeah. I don't know whether... <laughs> I, I can't get over our good neighbors to the north diving into the ocean uh, Oh, well, we ocean. embrace it because, yes. like, nobody else wants we'll to do, do it, it but yes. them. It helps your, it helps your tourism. <laughs> it yes. is the only people going in the water in March in South Carolina. And we love our Canadian friends. Keep coming. Yeah. So They're all blue when they leave, but we like them. <laughs> <laughs> so quickly. Um, what did you make of uh, the debate the other night? I, I think you, one of my favorite quotes of yours is that you didn't know whether you were going to be shot or poisoned. Oh, right. So I don't know which you were by the nominee. I don't know if Cruz was poisoning and Trump was, was uh, shooting you, but you've got Trump. Well, here's the deal. He beat me and everybody else, and he's tapping into something that people really feel out there. Hillary doesn't quite understand why people are so mad. I understand why people are upset with Washington. Nothing works. Here's the question. What's wrong with Washington? Is it do we work too well together and everybody's <laughs> mad that we're doing too much? Are people believing that we can't get to yes when yes is the right answer? So this idea that Washington is broken and the world is set up more against you than for you in certain demographics is very real. I think Mr. Trump has tapped into uh, a lot of voter discontent and to the extent you represent the status quo, people are, are ready to abandon you and I can understand that, but to re be replaced with what? That's the point, isn't it? If you don't like our current foreign policy, what are you going to do? Saying that Putin's our friend doesn't make it better. That's abandoning the status quo but, of where but he's our enemy. Senator, this goes to the temperament of Mr. Trump, which is, if he, he's, I quote him more or less, if somebody likes him, he's going to like them back. So he can be tricked into a foreign policy that depends on people 
who are nice to him. Well, I think he feels a need to return a compliment. I'm not so sure he's, all I can say, I, I can't explain any of this and take what I say <laughs> with, a, with a grain of salt because yeah. the bottom line is he thinks that Putin's a guy he can do business with. All I'm saying is that Putin has an agenda that is in conflict with ours. He is trying to destabilize NATO, the European Union. He's weaponizing refugees in Syria. Uh, he gobbled his neighbor up by the use of force. Uh, he is the biggest benefactor of the butcher of Damascus. No Arab is going to allow Damascus to be run by Assad simply because they, they're a proxy of Iran, their mortal enemy. So Russia is really up to no good. And when you understand that, you're well on your way to solving the problem. They have a pair of twos. We have a full house. But at the end of the day, you don't. The worst thing we could do is view Putin as a force of stability and someone we can do business with in the current construct. Maybe one day we could. His temperament and judgment. He's winning, Donald, in best able to handle the economy, best able to bring about change, and 70% of the people want it, and strongest to fight terrorism. Those are three really good things to be winning on in this election cycle, but he's still behind. Why? Because when people look at him, they see somebody that's not where they think they should be in terms of judgment, temperament, and capability to deal with the things that you have to deal with as president. I don't know if he helped himself in this first debate. I thought she really was quite together. Uh, I thought Donald had good moments, missed a lot of opportunities, and the only advice I could give him and take it for what it's worth prepare better <laughs> he doesn't he's very he's very anti preparation even <laughs> even for a debate well I was and that way that, in school and, it's, I, <laughs> and this how is how that, you turn out if you don't prepare you have to get in politics <laughs> don't let um, your children be politicians yeah. so. uh, well you're, you're you've done pretty well for yourself well. Uh, but uh, winging it and cramming in school is a little different than cramming for and, the presidency, being, but yes. he's unwilling to cram. I, I think, uh, here's what I think. I think he, he has tapped into some anger, and he's got good instincts, but you really do have to articulate an alternative to the status quo. Okay, things can actually be worse, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. If we embrace the wrong people, then we can make things worse. If we don't realize that Assad is the root cause of is a ISIL's dream in terms of having a recruiting mechanism. We don't understand that the Iranians are toppling four Arab capitals and that can't stand over time. If we don't push back and understand who our friends are and who our enemies are, and side with the Syrian people in two fashions, to destroy ISIL, which is a threat to us, but also to put military pressure on Assad, where the Syrians will have the capability to force out or reach a compromise with the Assad regime that pushes him away and gets him out of the picture. Without that, you're never going to stabilize. So it does matter. And from her point of view, when she says things like the Iraqis wouldn't allow us to have troops, that's not true. I was there. I know that's not right. That mm -hmm. The White House wanted to get to zero. You've got to also trust your commander in chief. Her problem is that she's going to have to up her game when it comes to trust. And she's going to have to understand that people are mad. And embrace the fact that you understand why they're mad, but tell them, here's where I'm going to take you. You're better off going this way versus what he says. And until she does it, I think she'll have a hard time getting over the top. So we have about a minute, so now I'm going to do a pop quiz. Okay. Uh, does Congress get out without shutting down the government? Yes. Um, are you going to get water, clean water for Flint? Uh, yes. Are you going to get funds for the Zika virus? Yes. Why do you say this? Because we'd be stupid not to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when all else but, works, but <laughs> not being stupid is a good reason to do so. It's something. never stopped Congress well, before. You know, I mean, yeah. That's true. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. Yeah. There's a level of stupidity that can't be crossed. And you know, I, I really, I want to preface this. I really, really like you, well, but thank you. one of I the like reasons. I like me too. So we're going to <laughs> One of the reasons I think Trump is the nominee of your party is because the American people don't like the Congress so much. Oh, They're totally, willing totally. to just throw it all yeah. up in the air. Yeah, I, I get it. I understand. You think all of us are, you know, just unfit to serve. I understand. All I can say, I think I'm more the solution to the problem. You're going to fix immigration, or you're not. Let me just end on this about immigration. 
I want to secure our borders. I want to control who gets a job. I want to increase legal immigration because we're a declining population. We're going to need workers. As to the 11 million, crooks have got to go, gang members have got to go, but grandmothers can stay. At the bottom, <laughs> here's the deal. As a grandmother, I thank you. Well, for grandmothers everywhere. And I know, I know our time is, but here's the deal. Without reaching a win-win situation, we're never going to get immigration fixed. To the people of South Carolina, I'm going to continue to do my best to find solutions to really hard problems, and Democrats do exist up here and Republicans exist. So the next president needs to be practical. They needs to get us in a room and get us to yes. And on immigration, you'll never deport 11 million people and their legal American children. That's not practical. But there is a way forward to keep the crook out and the grandmother here and to invent a uh, immigration system consistent with the 21st needs of this country. When it comes to debt, we all got in it together and we're only gonna get out together. Simpson Bowles, count me in if somebody's willing to lead presidentially. Okay. So I'm gonna tell the people of South Carolina, when it comes to hard problems, I'm gonna try to solve them. And if that's not what we should be doing up here, then I'm really no value to them. Okay. And I think <clears throat> I'm of value to the people of South Carolina and to the country. <clears throat> all right, your amigo. <laughs> Your amigo, Senator John McCain, Arizona is looking shaky. It could turn uh, blue. He wins by how many points? Uh, double digits because he is John McCain. <laughs> He's white. Haired. Very white. Yeah. <laughs> He's seasoned. He, I can't imagine the Senate without John McCain. I can't imagine the steady hand he brings to a shaky foreign policy. The people of Arizona, for those who are fighting this war, the 1% who are risking their lives, they need John McCain to have their back. Please send him back. I can't imagine it without you. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. God bless. <laughs> We're going to go back.